Hello and welcome to Server Smash! I am Far, your main caster. I am Redolent, uh, the co-caster here, and we have uh, with us... I'm Lance. I do the vehicle armor slash air supplement. Well, there we go. So that was a bit of a <laughs> higgledy biggledy start, but that's why we have a pre-show. I'm glad that started. Okay, so um, we do have our favorite uh, kind of announcer, um, kind of broadcast shouter. He has given us another intro. So uh, I think uh, we will just uh, throw that on the now. And uh, after that, we'll get straight into information of the tournament, where we are, how we're going, and all that kind of stuff. So, Poonhanners, why don't you take it away? Inside battles on the Poonhanners Jaeger server here. present the first battle of round three. Simulcast on the Planet Side channel. Commentary provided by Farah and Redolent. Additional casting provided by Lanzer. Order will be maintained by the Fun Police, led by Legerless. Live stats will be provided by Maelstrom. Justicia will be the referee for this battle. And now, Twitch viewers and hardcore gamers, hold on to your frame rate! Two heart-pounding hours of explosions and lasers in the swamps of Hassan for the honor of their servers in a rising position in the round-robin tournament. In the Western Warp Gate, with 288 players from 22 outfits, led by Patro Klus, and looking for their second win in this tournament, clad in purple spandex and fighting for Vanu, Connery Prime! In the Eastern Warp Gate, with 288 players from 22 outfits, led by Inmedius Rage of the Vault Outfit, and looking for the third win of this tournament, wearing blue armor and fighting for freedom, Emerald United! Thank you, Poonanners. It's appreciated as always. He will be back at the end to uh, announce our winner. Um, so, today, who have we got playing today then, Redlin? Today, we have Emerald versus Connery. Uh, this is uh, for the. I, I realize that. I, Nanners just shouted that out to the stream. I, I get that. But we're, we're letting Redlin explain who and what and why and where. This is, uh, this is the second time in seven weeks that they faced each other. And. Uh, I think Connery is definitely uh, hungry for some revenge. They uh, they didn't uh, uh, take well to losing to Emerald on Amorish uh, several weeks ago, and there's been a lot of talk back and forth between the servers, uh, a lot of hype uh, between the servers about this, and uh, I think that it, both are really, really ready for it. Emerald is going to be playing from the Eastern Warp Gate as the NC, and Connery will be playing from the Western Warp Gate as the VS. and. This is the first time that the two has ever, have ever faced each other on Haas. Uh That's true. They did face each other in a sort of kind of um, you get to play because you haven't played in a while exposition match on Amrish when we tried the Amrish map that we've been playing last uh, fortnight. Uh, but so this this will be kind of a rematch and um, it'll be interesting to see where the score goes here. I know there's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a heavy opinion of who may or may not win today, but. Um, I guess I'll just bring up just some of the, uh, the teams. So today uh, your team will be um, myself, the caster Fire, my co-caster Redolent, there's Lanzer who will be doing the co-casting with the air and ground, I'm mainly following the air battle, seeing what's going on there. And the referee here today is Jatissia. The rules today is uh, capture as much Hossen uh, as possible within a two hour period. So you've got two hours, capture as much territory as possible and we're going off um, percentage of territory which is what the scorers are on the top left of the bug. Uh, there's no overtime, and then that's that. The tournament, why don't you explain the tournament to us, Redland? Well, the tournament, we are in our third and final week of the round-robin side of our tournament. Basically, every server played every other server, and at the end of these three, uh, three weeks of matches, the top two servers will face each other in the championship game and we have a lot to talk about of the different variables and things it's almost like college football uh, of, of who gets to, to play for the championship game there are so many different permutations and things that can happen uh, and we're going to get into that in more depth uh, but basically it's based off of win-loss record and then the tiebreaker is ter total territory held in all matches Right, and you have given us a, a stats thing, which we'll bring up a little bit later, um, just just uh, before after the interview, but we will talk about in depth uh, what's happened so far, what the scores are so far, and the theoretical likely outcomes to the insanely improbable, statistically unlikely, but possible outcomes, which is always fun to talk about in sports of some sort. Um, 
why don't we see if our interviewees are here? Yes, I think that is the two reps. Um, oh, I got one other shout out. I'll do it at the beginning and then we'll have to do a shout out at the end as well. Here we go. So, um, public pickups is next on November the 1st. So I'll mention this at the end in the post game show, but basically public pickups, if you're not going to watch the whole thing or you're going to have to go early, they are happening on uh, November the 1st. If you want information, go to our server smash subreddit. There'll be an information there on the public pickup again on November the 1st. They had one on October the 18th. That was last week. It was very successful. They had over 50 people turn up and they played about seven or eight different uh, kind of competitive, fun, casual style games where you just got into teams. And they all played on Jaeger with a and whatnot. So that was that was very fun, very successful, and we encourage anyone who wants to come along and play, just come along by yourself. Don't need to be part of an outfit, don't need to be part of any server. You just need to come along and say, I want to play on the subreddit, and then all the information will be there. Okay, now that being said, interviews. Shall we go then, Redlin? Yes. Hello, guys. How are you? Hey there, good. So, are we uh, are we looking forward to this, or are we dreading this? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Emerald started prep about uh, ten fifteen days ago, and uh, the the whole team's been real excited for it. I I have to say, I was on earlier, uh, Neg. Right, I was on earlier, just doing stats, getting everything positioned right, and I saw one of your guys, just another uh, one from I think it was AOC. Is that one of your outfits? AOD. Yeah, AOD. There you go. Apologies, and. I was looking at him thinking, you're awfully shiny. So I was like, did you spend money on that? Because we know it's happened in the past. It's like, oh yeah, a whole bunch of us have spent like $20. We look great. <laughs> I was like, what, the, what is going on? So AOD is going to look fabulous. Style's important, man. Got to win in style. Or play in style, at least. Patro, so um, do you have anyone from Connery who's equally as dedicated? I'll take that as a no. Why don't we keep going back to you, Neg? I'll leave it with you, Redlin, if you want to ask something. Well, I, I'm just I'm interested about uh, that's so much the dedication of spending money on an account that they will never use again. I don't I don't necessarily know that's dedication as far as winning the match goes. Uh, I want to know um, basically what the uh, these guys think of Hassan and and how it's going to be to, to lead here. Patro, I know that you are uh, both the rep and the force lead today. So just tell me a little bit about the preparation you had to do and how how force leading on Hassan is is different than, than force leading on some of those other continents. I'd have to say right off the get go, the amount of lanes that you're having to fight across the board is like the biggest challenge in this match. It's more of okay, let's build three solid platoons and you know go at it. It's like okay, we ha we're looking at effectively. I think both sides are looking at around seven lanes off the get go. That you're having to spread your entire force across, or you know push where you really want. But that's that's the big issue. Like compared to Esmir, where you're really looking at like five maximum lanes, and de depending how your opener goes, you're like really only only three. And uh, I guess that plays into a lot of the strategy today. Can you uh, can you give us any hint as to something to watch out for that Connery might be trying today? That was Connery talking just now. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, we're gonna try to win. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no. I, I really want Connery to do well. I, I, I'm looking forward to a great match. Um, there are a lot of good outfits and players in Connery. Um, I wonder if some of the devs are sneakily playing with you today. It's happened before. Have some have some uh, dev power over there. You're you're gonna get <laughs> all, all crazy <laughs> now. So. Uh, uh, Emerald, uh, did you did you feel the strain of prepping for for Hassan as a pair, uh, as opposed to the other uh, continents? Well, it, in this case, Connery's already played on Hassan once, which uh, was a big big plus for them. You know, we're going into a green; they at least have some experience on it. You're um, referring to the Connery Briggs game. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got to go play down under. Um, so you know, went through the motions of uh, of setting up who we need to go where, all those things. But uh, I, I don't think. I don't think they're any more stressed than any other game. Is there uh, is there anything specifically that we should watch out for from uh, from Emerald today? <laughs> uh, I heard there was an air force. We saw it last fortnight, but I heard there was like a really impressive air force to watch. No I comment. You're gonna tell me tell us all about it. Uh, well, this will be the second game where we we finally got all our ducks in a row as far as uh, how to play air properly, rather than just asking pilots to show up and essentially saying go shoot things, which hasn't worked so well in the past, uh, so we're looking to, to make to keep our pilots' attention for a second game and, and give them some fun. 
If I don't see at least one Liberator or Reaver with Lumifiber, I'm going to be greatly disappointed. That's L Lanzer, that's your job, man. You need to find the most pimped out vehicle that someone's throwing silly money at. I'm not Farrah, Farrah is... Speak for that sort of thing. Farrah is, is desperately trying to get... Uh, I've get see a Valkyrie! See if anyone spent silly. money on a Valkyrie! <laughs> They're so rare! Spend their silly money on, on accounts they'll never, <laughs> they'll never get again. So... Uh, just before we wrap up here, uh, is there anything that the servers want to say to each other? Uh, Emerald? Um, <laughs> good luck, man. Just want to apologize ahead of time if there's any, uh, any uncouth hell chat, but, you know. It's, it's all in good fun and salt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Connor? Absolutely. I don't know. All I'd have to say is just well played uh, this season, Emerald, and uh, looking forward to having some fun today. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, guys. Uh, we don't want to keep you here for too long. Uh, best of luck. And um, at the end, I would really like to maybe have a chat about how you led and how you broke stuff down because I know there's a ton of lanes and if someone was to say, here's like seven, eight platoons, go knock yourself out, I'd be like, oh God, where do I even start? So definitely looking forward to talking to you guys um, at the end. So thanks very much and we'll, we'll catch you later. Best of luck. Great, thanks. Okay, so, here we are, on Hawson. Uh, we do have one other stat that you gave me, Redlin. Uh, let me bring that up. Uh, yes, here we go. Um, get rid of TeamSpeak. Or the TR theme, they're not playing today. What, who don't we care about them? Okay, so, um, stats. This is kind of a rude crowd thing that um, Redlet's kind of drawn up, but basically we can see that Emerald is on two wins, no losses, and 123 points. Cobalt is on one win, one loss. Uh, I believe they they beat uh, Miller and they lost to Emerald. Connery is on one win, one loss. They lost to Cobalt, they beat Miller, and Miller unfortunately is the underdogs where they've lost twice. Uh, I do hear the phrase Miller server, worst server, being laughingly and jokingly thrown around by Miller players. Um, the territory points, the total percentages are the, the, the numbers on the right there. So 123 for Emerald, 100 for Cobalt, 98 for Connery, and 61 for Miller. So, hypothetical statistical analogy, Redlet, right? Emerald probably, even if they're lost today, is going to make it to the finals. Unless you, ha you, you, you had figured this out. How could Emerald not make it to the finals? Well, I mean, what we're looking at here is uh, this is like Group A in the World Cup. Uh, you're looking first at the record. So Emerald comes into this in a very strong position. They have two wins, and that means that they can lose today, and as long as they don't get absolutely creamed, and as long as they don't get uh, a lot of lucky things happen for their opponents, they're, they're probably moving through. However, because of the way things can happen and the way crazy things can happen, uh, Basically, Cobalt, Connery, and Miller all are alive for that second spot. Uh, the it, 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 basically depending on what happens as far as the uh, the wins and losses today, and much more importantly, the territory percentage. Uh, if you look at Cobalt and Connery, they could both win this weekend. Uh, if they both won and won very large in their matches. It is possible that they could wind up with more territory percentage and both have two wins, same as Emerald. That is the only the only weird. Well, that is that true, yeah, because there's only a twenty percent difference between Cobalt and Emerald, and and Connery is about twenty five percent. So if if Connery got a sufficient win, I think you said it's about sixty seven percent, sixty eight percent. To get exactly one point over, it's uh, uh, sixty seven to thirty seven. Oh, Connery there you go. So th there's the goal that Connery's looking for, sixty seven percent. Now. Can they do it? Well, that's up to Connery. If they're ever going to do it in any map that gives them freedom and flexibility to grab as much territory as they can, it's got to be on Hawson, so that'll be that. And and Cobalt, they're playing Miller tomorrow. They themselves um, need to guarantee that if Connery wins and does get that magical 67%, they also need to score big. And then, bizarrely, Miller could hypothetically also, and I, mean, I stress hypothetically here, because it's a long shot, they would need Emerald to beat Connery heavily, and then Miller would need to beat Cobalt, and on the order of something like 75 or 80 percent. And um, I, I, we don't see that happening, possibly, but we, who knows? Oh, you know, we forgot to ask. We forgot to ask uh, Negator, what happens if he doesn't get over 70 percent today? Does he get flogged? Oh, I was in one of the Twitch channels. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I saw it in the chat and I didn't ask it. 
we may be asking at the end. Is, the, the great thing is that it, the, the easiest way to look at this is Cobalt controls its own destiny. If Cobalt wins, or as long as they get the same or more territory percentage in a win or a loss compared to Connery, they move forward. They're already two, per, uh, two percentage points ahead. They control their own destiny. Connery needs help. Miller needs a lot of help uh, to get into that championship game. And Emerald needs a lot of things to go very, very wrong for it to somehow get locked out of it. But as of right now, when when hope is high for everyone, it is theoretically possible for everyone to get into that championship. So we will see after after today's game. Yes, right. So looking at the Hawson map, you've got 288 people, but there are, as he correctly said, there's the North Kessels uh, crossing lane. You've got the construction site is two. The Akam Biolabs three. Southern Labs is four. Nason's Defiance is five. Gurney Dam is six. Um, We'll go with the Halloween names, even though it's it can get confusing. So we'll go Treehouse of Horrors. There's no Simpsons, um, and then finally you go down to SRP Nanite Relay. Uh, SRP Nanite Relay. We know that SRP Hydroponics is Space Rice Paddy. Surely it's not Space Rice Paddy Nanite Relay, or is that just? Regardless, it's one of the newer bases. I think the, devs are, I think the devs are playing tricks with you because they told you it meant space rice patty, and then they're like, "Can you believe he thought that we actually meant it meant space rice patty?" Well, it was it's Vietnamish. It's got some patties. Anyway, the the point is that there are lots of lanes, and as the map progresses, it spreads out even more. So you can't have like a platoon in the north lane, a platoon in the south lane, for example, on the Esmer map, and then a platoon in the middle and a reserve platoon and an air platoon. Right? That just isn't going to happen. Uh, so you're going to have to split into squad sections. And I think this will probably play into maybe Emerald's hands more than Connery's because we've seen Emerald's play where they are able to pull the right number of force to apply right pressure everywhere. And their pressure gameplay means there won't be four or five fires going on. There'll be seven or eight fires going on. So I think um, squad delegation and leadership delegation is something that we know that Emerald does it's to see whether or not Connery does the same thing because one force commander trying to lead seven fronts is just going to get chaotic. Something to, to definitely keep an eye on. There are choke points that you can hold at certain places but from both sides. So just because you lose a base at the beginning doesn't mean you lose the whole lane. The one place that isn't true is Akan Southern Labs. The central lane on this continent has no large facilities, major facilities. It's all single cap bases all the way to both warp gates. That is the weak spot in the armor. If you're going to push anywhere, if you're holding them all the other places, if you manage to get Treehouse of Horrors and, and just hold them there and, and Gurney Dam and several other places that is the weak spot if you want to go in and before they even know it you're deep into their territory that's, right. that is some place that you can push but the difference is that that woodman asc the capture point is in banana and that's a relatively easy with the vehicle terminal sunder deployment jump in it's an easier base to save than broken veil garrison which is horrendous and gets turned over so many times in previous games because the capture point is so far away from the capture uh, from the spawn room that I suppose you could say there's a slight favor on the Eastern Warp Gate, if only due to Broken Veil, but Broken Veil wouldn't come into it if you put an emphasis on the Cannes Southern Labs, which is a more of a balanced neutral fight. Something else to look at here is, since we last played on Hassan, Gurney Dam has changed. They've completely revamped the base. It used to be a powerhouse building with a banana building attached to it, and now it is far more open. It's there are nice, I like it. There are trees that are hanging out there, and it is a sunken warehouse building with just very little cover at all. It is definitely the kind of place you do not want to have to be pushing out from asunder or across that maze of catwalks if there's air above you. You're just going to get absolutely slaughtered. So that completely changes that whole southern lane where before you could just drop into a point hold and it was pretty easy. You well, it's going to be a neutral base as well. So the two spawn rooms and how you can teleport from either side isn't going to matter. So it's going to be kind of... The Sunder placement is kind of awkward because it's designed for the attacker to almost come in from the north or set themselves up on the northern bridgeway. So I wonder if there'll be some sort of vehicle fight going on the northern bridge or if one team just decides to give up the base and leave it. And it's the same for Nason's Defiance. Sometimes we've seen service matches in Austin where there's a big confrontation in the three capture points of Nason's Defiance, south, middle, and north. And other times it, one team decides to give up, although I wouldn't recommend that because it's a large outpost and commands the middle. But if you decide to go for Nason's Defiance, how many people do you send? One squad? Two squads? Uh, I mean, or do you try and commit that elsewhere? Do you try and commit down the south? I mean, 
It's, it's complicated because on the south, Southgate checkpoint is a defensive point for the Hossen Eastern Warp Gate. So that large outpost prevents any push to the tech plant. But on, on, on the Bytel side, there are only small outposts. So in theory, if you're in the Eastern Warp Gate, you might push the extreme south, right up to the Bytel Biolab and Cairn Station. After that, you can just look for other easy territories. And this is one of the few maps where there are no hard stops in terms of large outposts or large facilities. You can, you know, uh, go all day long on small outposts if you choose to do so. We've also seen in all the other matches here, it's very easy. Even with the 336 versus 336 that we saw as the merger smash, you still didn't see big fights everywhere. It is so large, it's so massive, you have to move your forces around and you wind up leaving holes. The server that can find those holes quickest and exploit them the fastest is going to win. Well, last time, because they had more people... Everyone... Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. If, if you combine everyone together, you are leaving a hole somewhere else. And this is absolutely the place that you can be made to pay for it by a, a quick-thinking enemy. Uh, yeah, and one, another thing we saw was um, that a tactic we might have come across was um, harassment forces. And when I, when I say that, I don't mean harassers. I mean, like, one squad of infiltrators. Anywhere on any lane that is not heavily fought after, the infiltrators will go to the enemy base be that one out of 12 at the enemy base because you can not know if it's one guy or 12 guys so you have to respond by sending at least 12 guys if not more and they would hack the base and then whoever's responsible for that sector of the map be it the force commander or her as delegates see it see this one to two minutes and then they're going to have to respond with probably at least a squad unless they have their own infiltrators in the squad to go there so that pulls away 11 extra people that could be used elsewhere but on top of that, it gets more than that because that if if the base gets down to like a minute, you know, they take a minute off it, so it's like three minutes to go or two and a half minutes to go, you've just got 90 seconds for free on that base. They may come in and make a save, but then they have to commit forces. Or if I'm the attacker and I see that one of the infiltrator bases out of all of them are being saved, hasn't been responded to, it's down to around two and a half minutes. At that point, I might say, you know what, let's send three squads there. Because then, then you're taking the four minute reaction time down to sub two minute time, if that makes sense, uh, in terms of fighting the base. And it's very low reaction time for the uh, defending team to respond to it. And at that point, then they have to do a mass recall because they only have one shot at it to push in. And then that then stretches them everywhere else. So it's all about flexing, pressuring, and um, just trying to draw your, en you know, your enemy away from as many fronts as possible, concentrating them in as few lanes as possible so you can just uh, apply pressure. Oh, do you have any other thought about that, maybe, Red? I think that the, uh, the real thing here is so many of these bases require so much time to get to the point. It takes so you know, it's not a 15 second run. It's as much to a minute run on some of these things. You can't, you can't come in with 60 seconds left in the base. You won't even make it to the point in time, regardless of who's there defending. That is, your platoon leads and squad leads have to be aware of that when they're redeploying. What, uh, what base are you currently over right now? Uh, I'm currently over Gurney Dam, just looking at the dam because we were talking about that. But I do think uh, time is moving on, so we need to have a ref speech from, from Justicia. Uh, just to lay down the rules of the law to all our players, and then after that we will just go into our end game and get ready for the game itself. All right, I'll uh, do it right now. Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. This is uh, Justicia speaking on all call. Please pay careful attention as I go over the match rules. All participants should have already been informed about these. Uh, I will be the game referee for the match. I have a final say on all matters of the event. All concerns during the event should be brought to the attention of your server rep, who will then bring the matters to me. Server reps for today are Ghost Marauder for Connery and Negator for Emerald. Uh, the game referee is responsible for timekeeping of the event and is also responsible for tallying the final score. The objective of today's match is to capture as much of Hassan as possible within a two hour time limit. The winner is the server with the most territory at the end of these two hours, as determined by the in-game territory control graph. There is no overtime. There are no immediate gameplay restrictions, so play the game as it is meant to be played. Uh, the shield generator guarding the point at East Aiken Storage Depot has been destroyed before the match to ensure equal access to Aiken Biolab. Every player should have their character number listed before their name on TeamSpeak. So, for example, if your character is ServerSmashTR316, you should put the number 316 in front of your name on TeamSpeak. 
Also, do not delete any characters from the account you have been given. If you do delete one, we cannot simply recreate it with battle rank and certs, and you will not be given another account, and you and your outfit may face further consequences. Uh, if you have any problems with your characters or accounts, please report them to your server rep so we can keep track. All participants are required to remain on the event continent of Hossin during the entire match. You may not leave to a different continent for any reason, and if you have account problems or need to be replaced, you need to contact your server rep. Reserves must check in with the server rep before subbing into the game. Uh, cheating, using exploits, hacking or real life enemy team sabotage may forfeit the match for your entire server and could disqualify your outfit or server for participation in future Planetside Battles events. The match will start at the top of the hour. You will receive a countdown notice on all call from me and you are not allowed to leave the warp gate until then. So get ready and best of luck. Why don't you tell it how... Come again? I'm sorry, I was just saying, um, how long have they got left? Is it three and a half minutes roughly? Yeah. Okay. So, with that in the mind, three and a half minutes read, we were talking about the map. Oh, one uh, last thing, we'll just go over a bit while we've got a few moments is our stats for the day. These are provided by uh, Maelstrom. He did want me to do a very quick shout out, which realistically doesn't have time, which we'll do at the end of the show. But Maelstrom has PS2 alerts. He's been doing our code for us. He's been working very hard. And as we see, I'll turn it on. We have our uh, progress bar. This is the progress bar just going back and forth. Inside will be text. It's signifying base saves and base takes if we don't catch it on stream. Um, we also have our kills, deaths and TKs. These are cumulative across the entire uh, Empire and Gold and then specific teams in purple and blue. So purple would be Connery because they're playing VS and obviously Freedom Team and C would be Emerald. Uh, some other stats we've got. We have, um, and now these won't show because obviously there's no stats being recorded at the moment. We have a map timeline that will show base flips as it goes along. So you'll see that when we start. Uh, we have a kill graph that's showing one person, but we'll see more. And then we have a leaderboard which has been revamped with a search feature. A bunch of few other. There are kind of cool tools and whatnot, so we'll bring that up um, and show the game. I'm expecting to see the Orion today, but you know, it's Connery, nothing would surprise me if it was something else, but we'll see. Okay, now that being said, we've got the stats out of the way. We'll show that in game as we uh, proceed. We have about two minutes, so I'm just going to show the intro video, and then uh, we will go into our final countdown with Justitia. Where we come from, we each fight for loyalty, for freedom, or perhaps enlightenment, but not here. Here we cast aside our disparate beliefs, our barriers and preconceived notions, and band together as a global force to engage in some of the largest competitive battles this world has ever seen. We are the squads, the platoons, the empires and servers full of players coordinating a complex game of strategy and tactics. This is where combined arms happens. This is where war comes to play. This is Server Smash. Thank you, Radlock, as always, the best voice in show business. This is the station I'll call one minute before match start. Already heard it. One minute. I'm headed off to the NC warp gate. You headed off to the VS one. Uh, uh, I will be. Here. I'm, I'm going to be going to the dam. Gurney Dam. Okay. I'll see what goes on then. Uh, maybe a little bit to the north. Um, have a look at the Gurney Dam and also have a look at Treehouse of Horrors. I'm curious to see what, if anything, goes on there. Because uh, some teams have ignored it entirely, and other ones have seen it as the gateway into the enemy territory in the south. And of course, Lanzer will be uh, trying to follow our air uh, battles and keep us apart. Thirty seconds. Of how are we doing, Lanza? Are we all good, ready to go? Yeah, we're fine. So, do you keep the air as one team? We've got 16 seconds here, or do you kind of split them up as they go wherever they're going? Uh, Alright, so everybody, far, get ready. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Go, go, go. Good and luck. we are then live with our first game of round three, Emerald versus Connery. And uh, off we go. First set of wave death ball. That's what they're kind of doing right now. 
then again... The Reaver Force, I think, is splitting into two waves, going north and south. And already large, we've had four suicides. A already. large, large one <laughs> spearheaded southwest. Four suicides already. That's nice, man. That's nice. It is a huge mossy wing. Or not mossy, Reaver wing. Yeah, the uh, scythes, uh, there, there is a large force of them headed to uh, the dam. They're crossing over the amphitheater. Looks like they want to go to Nason's Defiance Gurney Dam. We're, we're going to meet here. That's exactly where they're about to meet. You're about to yeah, see it's the center of the map here. again. Are they going to bail out or are they going to fight? Because I actually wouldn't mind seeing some fighting because it's a neutral base the first two minutes. Wow, it's a massive drop on the cap point! It, it was strictly just to drop out of her A. So. Well, Emerald gets himself control of the cap point. How long though? I mean, we see uh, Connery forces coming in from the northwest. The thing is, the first two minutes don't really matter that much. So I don't see why you would want to drop on the base so quickly. You'd want to help keep air control in the skies. And unfortunately for Connery, this is just uh, more bad news as this always happens. They have been completely interdicted at a con data hub. Again, uh, they there is almost an entire platoon here of uh, Emerald forces, and whatever forces that uh, Connery sent were just simply not enough to, to uh, take this. They are being interdicted by there are two galaxies up and plenty of people. Because the bio lab's such a quick capture, they only need to be there for about two or so minutes, and that's all. That well, they need to hold on for four minutes, but then after that, we'll see. So Connery Air Force is at Treehouse. Emerald Air Force went to Nasus to find some Grinny Dam. It's a kind of a hodgepodge of- wow, that galaxy died quickly. Um, the high up, we see Emerald Air Force, but down low we see uh, reinforcements for Connery, beaconing- they really want Gurney Dam, I mean they're really bringing reinforcements with galaxies and beat squad beacons. It, looking at the map right now, we have uh, Emerald entrenched at Kessel's Crossing, a uh, very large uh, force there. As I said, they are interdicting at a, Don, uh, at a Con Data Hub, however, they have a small force at Construction Site Beta, and Connery out pops them there. Uh, Nason's Defiance, as you said, is going for Emerald, and it's about a 50-50 fight at Gurney Dam, and they are out. Uh, Connery is out popped at Treehouse of Horrors, uh, and that it seems to be falling in Emerald's favor as well. However, Connery has a very large force down at Four Fingers right now, uh, trying to move that cap forward. I'm going to head down there right now. So, lots of motion, motion sensors and tracer darts being fired by Emerald still at Gurney Dam. They've reached that two minute marker where it now goes into their favour. So now is the time if Emerald, you know, if Connery wanted to attack is, is when they would push. But I'm not seeing any spawns. I'm, I wonder, do you see the Sunder? Okay, there's some beakers from it. Now they're getting picked off from Emerald. The Emerald's got air control. Now the question is, while this fight is raging on, has anyone brought in Sunder spawns? And it doesn't look like it, no. So this is all an infantry fight and reinforcements. No Maxes. Maxes usually being shunned these days, believe it or not, because they're too expensive on resources at 450, and with no boosts. Wow, I wonder if anyone would actually spend money on a boost. That's an interesting idea to get an advantage. Anyway, it's your own money. So, uh, you know, without any boosts, uh, maxes take up a huge amount of 450 resources, preventing you from grenades, C4ing, and mining, and all that uh, other things that are nice during a service match. So if you can get away with a fight during infantry, that would work. But in this instance, right now, with galaxy reinforcements, it would really help. Oh, see, this galaxy is landing the... Side lambda. Oh, there, it's finally killed. Oh, he's still alive. Nope. There's a landed galaxy. Oh wait, hang on. We see lots of scythes. Go ahead, Lanza, you're saying? So there's a pretty good duking session going on between the two respective air forces and no clear victory. Over Gurney Dam? Yep. Uh yeah, actually it's over Gurney Dam. It I'm, is I'm now a lot one of minute. Scythes and Reese corpses. So it is now guys. one minute until uh Treehouse of Forest caps in favor of Emerald. So Detroit, everybody who's watching the statistics, can you please refresh your pages so actually our kill history doesn't work? Top. Ah, uh, yes. It's one of the many, it's not good enough, Maelstrom. Why is it not working, Maelstrom? Where's my color-specific items on the vehicles, Maelstrom? But you know what, we'll get back to that later. Back to the stream itself. Uh, 19, 18, 17 seconds, and uh, Gurney Dam will fall to Emerald. It looks like there's a last desperate push for Connery, but it just they don't seem to be able to get inside. They've got these lovely little kind of corner sections that are you just simply can't grenade. You'd need a simultaneous push on all four sides. 
And there we go, Gurney Dam falls and is taken by... Oh, actually, I have a cheat sheet here. Connery is, is putting up a really excellent fight here at uh, Akan Southern Labs. This is a very difficult point to hold. Uh, they are staying on here by sheer force of will and medic res, it looks like at the moment. Um, there are a lot of vehicles, a lot of sunders outside for uh, for NC Emerald, and um, they keep on threatening to push the point, but Connery's dug in here pretty well. So uh, Gurney Dam was taken by Vault on live. Specialized in infantry, uh, they split from 3 just founded uh, by 3 mage platoon leaders from Watterson VS, created on the 5th of May 2014, and the focus in this smash is tactical air leadership bus drivers, leadership tactical. Thank you very much for the person who gives me the cheat sheet, I've got all the different outfits that are taking part today, so we'll look forward to that. Right, now that Gurney Dam is out of the way, uh, we will have a look at the map for the first time on stream and see what chaos is ensuing. Unfortunately, uh, the NC just finally uh, came in here human wave style and pushed Connery off of the point at Akan Southern. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't know that there's enough VS left here to make a push back on. They seem to have one well, of the things about Force Commander is the map is going to be difficult to show because the numbers don't uh, update. But we can see in the north, Kessel's Crossing has gone in favour of new conglomerate, that being Emerald. Uh, Awful Pit has some Vanu from uh, Connery, and it looks like there's roughly a 50-50 fight going at Kessel's Crossing. See how it goes. Construction site Beta was or is still being ticked down. It looks like the Connery was about to take it, but it looks like now that new conglomerate are there. So we'll go there next. Uh, the Biolab very slowly is being hacked by um, NC. Um, and if they get all three capture points, which they can, and they get a can da Southern Data Hub in 60 seconds, then it'll be a free base, the Biolab for Emerald. Uh, Nason's Defiance is actually small numbers. Look at that. It's only 1 through 12 and 1 through 12. Can you have a look at Nason's Defiance and tell me what's going on? Gurney down, we can see that the VS have come in and forced. They're outnumbering 3 to uh, 2. Or 60 to 30, sorry, so 2 to 1. Uh, Treehouse, of course, has been taken, and then construction site. Down there, uh, construction site Beta actually just had a, a, a large uh, force of VS push into it. And oh, right, we're back. back. Oh, nicely done. So two minutes to go. All right. So they're showing their hand. They definitely want this base. Definitely lots of Vanu. And the question is, is it too much Vanu? Are they losing too many bases elsewhere? And Connery has finally learned uh, from, from some other people who are doing this. They, they have brought a harass around to the point here of construction site Beta. This will greatly help them hold off those choke points, hold off the pushes back to the doors. No, if he runs up, runs over all his teammates, though. <laughs> That's not going to end well with him going back and forth, back and forth. Still, uh, I wouldn't mind him being able to fire the PP outside of the door rather than firing them when they come in the door. Nice X Connery go. has made another push back into Gurney Dam. They just gal dropped onto the point here. The, the huge problem they have is I really don't think that Emerald's going to allow them to keep uh, Sunders up. So they have to defend themselves from an incredibly, incredibly open cap point down here. And the problem is also that the spawn Sunder locations are exposed in the road if you bring any vehicles from one of your previous bases. And on the top of that, the bridgeway along the, the, the whole walkway from the, the Sunder locations are totally exposed to enemy air. I don't see how they're going to lose construction site beta, however. Connery should get construction site beta. There's just too many of them. Uh, and without any reliable spawns for Emerald, they're just going to have to either gal in Sunder or other. Oh, nope, never mind, that's that spawn gun. I'd actually like to win this fight. Connery is doing an excellent point hold for, for what little they've been given here at Gurney Dam. Uh, the NC keep on trying to push maxes in, and they're they're holding on with just a single max or two in here. This looks like Future Crew and some others. They're down to one max on the point here. I, I don't see how this can possibly survive. He just That max just went down. We're up for some some miracle res grenades now. I just think there's too many too many NC pushing oh, in now. Too fast to the mic camera. I apologize. Oh, the max is up. The max has been raised. He's on his way back down. Hey guys, I'm back. Oh, wait, you brought max too. Oh, that's no fair, bro. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, NC Emerald backing firm control of the capture point. Um, one minute forty five until full save. And this time they have brought maxes, which will be repaired and raised. You mentioned that you thought that Emerald might try and push the south. That seems to be what they're doing. They managed to get Treehouse of Horrors, and now they are, they are directly pushing on the two points uh, from there, trying to get all those small capture bases as fast as they can. thing is, what do you do with that large force that you used to take construction site beta? Because that was almost a full platoon. 
You see that Awful Pit, the fight is moved from Kessler's Crossing to Awful Pit, so pressure's there. The fight between Construction Site Beta, well, it's between two large outposts, so you don't really want to fight for a large outpost when there's so many small outposts going on. A can Data Hub is actually going to be NC, it's not even going to be Vanu at all. Still, they're going to be stuck at Hatcher Air Station, but pressure could be applied there, so the fighting's off Emerald's bases. Uh, Broken Vale Garrison, there's a whole platoon almost of Connery being pushed off of Can Sutherlands, and Broken Vale is actually very easy, or easier. Oh wow, the capture point's been taken over by um, Connery again on Gurney Dam. See the Maxis and Reinforcers coming in. But anyway, as I was saying, Broken Vale is easier for Emerald to take than it is for Connery to defend. And uh, we'll talk about the remaining bases as soon as we see what goes on here at Gurney Dam. How's the air fight going on, Lanzer? Anyone got dominance? Uh, looks like Emerald has a slight advantage, at least on the middle, in the middle of the map. But now they're duking it out over by construction site Lambda. I, I would say the Emerald is doing a little bit better job keeping together and keeping tight formation, but Connery is... is wow! Huge air force for um, Emerald is swarming over Gorni Dam, but it's bloating the numbers at the base. 57 to 42, but the simple fact is all the Vanu numbers are inside the capture point. I don't know why these guys are running outside. See this heavy assault right here? He has run from the spawn rooms out. Any chance of him getting res involves a minute coming up and exposing himself. That's just simply not going to happen. You want to fight at the very most at the staircase, and even then with all this air force going on in the above, I wouldn't go outside. In fact, yeah, it's outside. Concerted effort from Connery. Their their air as as being a cohesive. I think that might. Oh, Max crashed from the side. Though, let's pick them off. Ah, there goes the cat point. I think this is just going to be a rinse and repeat element. And we see it's the it's the same outfits. It's Vault and V Ray. As, as you're seeing, Lanzer, go ahead. Yeah, as I was saying, they they don't really seem to be working as a a scythe ball, so to speak. But they're definitely engaging, pulling back, engaging again. We'll need to talk with the force commanders to see if Connor was able to get their air force organized. I remember there was a little bit of drama or talk about difficulty in forming an effective air wing, so we'll see how that maybe plays into the game battle. Um, you can see that Emerald, who used to shun air force, have kind of embraced it fully, uh, using it to good effect. Uh, Vivrev, by the way, if in case anyone's wondering, is Vanu Revolution on their live servers. Uh, they enjoy infantry stuff mostly, which is not surprising because they're actually fighting infantry now in this base, and uh, they're one of the oldest Watson outfits. There you go. Um, Connery been... is on the point at Treehouse of Horrors, and there is a large NC contingent trying to push on the top deck towards the point here. Uh, they have maxes, they are very well supported, and I don't know that Connery has any idea that, that what's coming at him. Wow, the and capture point is horrendous. And I mean horrendous. Look at all those maxes in the minimap, that's, 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 that's sickening. That, that, that's been washed off. Now. The fact is, Construction Site Sigma was saved and Construction Site Lambda was saved, although the fighting's going on at Lambda 50 50, and there's only Vanu from Emma Connery on Construction Site Sigma. Uh, they're still. The problem with. They're trying to push Southgate in the south, right? And, and, and I get where they're going at, but this is a three point base. And it's also a very, very difficult three point base because. Simply look at the nature of the the bases it is. The teleport building is up here to the north, so to the northeast. So it's a short-ish run in general to get to Charlie. And um, sunders and placements and whatnot are very difficult. They can be all over the place. But at the same time, the Bravo capture point is so close from the south of the spawn room. So teleporting around the base is very easy to make a full on push to grab a capture point. And then you've got the point in the center which you then have to hold so that the attackers has to jerry-rig between A and B and C and moving from A to B is extremely dangerous due to the southern spawn room. So I don't know why Connery is trying to push unless they've split their forces up and just say you guys push in the south. Still, Connery made a good push and got themselves four fingers. I guess fighting at Southgate just keeps pressure over their own bases. So, you know, kudos to that. The, uh, now that Emerald has managed to secure its opening, we're seeing classic Emerald tactics here. They're they're basically allowing things to tick down a little bit and then dropping absolutely overwhelming force, perhaps at the last second or at the very least, uh, you know... One thing that I would well, like you to look out for Redland is this force, that the overwhelming... Oh, I see, I see a Valkyrie. Valkyrie with Sales Camel on the uh, capture point of Broken Veil Garrison. Looks like they're going to try and get it back. Oh, they actually have saved it. Right. 
one thing I want to look for Redland is this force, this overwhelming force of Emerald that comes in, is it the same force? I wonder if it's just one platoon that's acting as a sort of rapid reaction overwhelm them. Maybe sometimes in sets of two squads, sometimes in just in the full force. Whether they're the fire put outers. Or if it's different people doing it. Interestingly, this is something that we haven't really seen from Connery before. Um, they are down right now, but they are still sending small groups of people ahead to get things capping. Sleepy Hollow had a small force ticking it, uh, a Con Data Hub, uh, even Kessel's Crossing. They keep on pushing. If they can continue doing this, oh, they can get some of this back. Here's another interesting concept. Connery saved the capture point of Broken Veil vale Garrison, but unlike in previous games, we've seen other teams leave the base upon a base cap and then put out another fire, perhaps there's not enough fires yet, the Connery force stayed to defend the capture point. It's a very good thing they did because they are heavily engaged in uh, reinforcements now from Galaxies and Valkyries of the Emerald Force trying to take the capture point back. There is a uh, air gank squad of Emerald Liberators over top of Sleepy Hollow that is going after some Galaxies from uh, Connery right now. I don't know if you're with this uh, Lancer. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to decipher Connery's air game right now, and I think I've figured it out. But just give me a little bit, a few more minutes. Well, <sighs> Emerald just overwhelms the defenders that were in Broken Veil uh, Garrison, and they only have one and a half minutes, sorry, one minute and 50 seconds until they get the point. And with this number of Valkyries, I don't know what the Valkyries are doing rather than just being perhaps cheap transport or squad transport, and the Galaxies, it's going to be very, very, very hard, as we were saying, but the nature of the capture point of Broken Veil vale for the Connery Force to come back and save this. And, and this is the, this is the linchpin. When you get Broken Veil vale Garrison, you can apply the Air Force to help defend Hurricane Secure Storage because the capture point is super exposed to air. Or you can just try and push into Connery's innards and push onto construction site Epsilon and then go into the kind of heartland of Connery. Connery not so having an air force to chase people off is certainly becoming a real problem for them at Treehouse of Horrors. They have galaxies that are just bombing them indiscriminately. They can't do anything about it. They don't have enough burster maxes, and even if they put a whole bunch of, uh, of lock-ons onto them, they're just galaxies, they'll, they'll walk it off. And they've managed to get the point here, but I, I see these galaxies just coming back and sticking their nose right in the doorway and taking everyone out again. They really okay, need so a, a small force of ESFs. Earlier, when I said that Connery didn't have a a cohesive scythe ball going on I was wrong what I found is they're the, the difference is they're hanging back they're hanging back uh, 2,000 meters just sitting there at like a disciplined unit waiting to sink its teeth into something and then they push forward they take out whatever they can and then they pull back again so it's almost like they're a cobra they're just sitting there waiting for a moment yeah to but they could have really used their air force to help save Broken Veil vale. Absolutely. Oh. But that's just their chosen way, I guess, so far. Well, I don't, definitely know entirely, I don't know entirely why this Mag Rider did this, but this is a different point hold if you're any damn now. Uh, the VS have started, have managed to hack a vehicle terminal, and they are pulling all manner of vehicles onto this uh, this area. Oh, no! Oh, oh. The, the person who deployed the Sunder parked it in such a way that it's blocking the vehicles from getting on. This is the only place that you can get vehicles onto the main capture point area. And he's parked it in such a way that it's making it incredibly difficult for the bigger vehicles over. And um, with regards to Broken Veil vale Garrison, a little bit too few too late, the Vanu Force was able to successfully push onto the capture point at Broken Veil vale Garrison. However, the difference is that now they have a four minute base cap. So the differences are the Vanu Force is here, they're set up, but they have to hold this base for four minutes. That's four minutes, whereas the Emerald Force at the end when they capture this, it was just two minutes. There's no Air Force in the skies, or okay, we see a couple sides, so I mean this, there's no spawn in Air Force, there's no like Valkyries or Galaxies where they can spawn in reinforcements. Plenty of beacons, but they're susceptible to EMP Sorry grenades. To there's a large max crash trying to resecure for the NC at Gurney Dam right now, if you can get down here. Uh, On my way. Charging... It's the charge of the Light Brigade into some of these oh, tanks right now. Area. Fun fact, did you know the charge of the Light Brigade was actually successful and most people survived? Well, it wasn't successful. Most of them. <laughs> no, they survived. It was successful. Most of them got out alive. It was just a myth. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, it looks like a bloody carnage. They got it back. I didn't think they had enough people. That was at the last possible second. They must have come from both directions. 
did we can saw the flanking forces but it was maxes from all sides and this is the problem with this capture point there are four entry points um to the gurney dam uh capture building and I would rather see the defenders of the point, um, you know, the attackers that is, not actually defend inside. Because of the air force that Emerald is exerting, it's, too, it's not safe enough for Connery to fight outside. However, the base has natural choke points in the form of these two bridges. This kind of area here, covering this uh, tube and covering this crater here, covers this bridge very, very nicely. And this bridge can be covered very, very nicely as well. So any form of crashing, you can kind of counter repulse. Um, and then with radar motion you can change your flanking fire and keep the enemy at a distance whereas if you stay just inside the capture point the enemy comes in and your first line of fire is literally at the door and then when Max's charge in it's, it's too late then um, it looks like Connery is starting to exert a little bit more pressure on the air game uh, still holding back a little bit but they're pushing forward now and actually doing some defensive tactics which is working out for him really well Emerald has moved forward onto Hatcher Air Station. They own all three points here, and this seems to be a relatively small squad, but this is the kind of thing where if Connery starts panicking with forces, they're going to draw more forces than they have here. Yeah, and that, right, which is what we were talking about earlier, and just how many did they send back to have like a small-scale fight? Okay, so we... All right, so Gurney Dam, for the most part, at the moment, has been saved. I mean, the Connery force has been pushed off by Emerald. If we were to have a look at the map, Kessel's Crossing is a two-squad affair, so that's two-squad and two-squad, but look at that, it's a huge platoon plus Vanu Awful Pit, I wonder what's going on there. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, very small numbers, Hatcher Air Station is two to three squads roughly, uh, Epsilon Site, that's small numbers, Broken Vale is still going with 60 seconds, we're going to go back to Broken Vale because it's platoon four sizes now. I'm down here at Four Fingers, and it looks like for all the effort that Connery put into getting this and trying to push forward, they have abandoned this, and this is an incredibly dangerous base to abandon. This is probably the longest run time of any base in, in PS2, from the spawn room to the capture point. It's almost a solid minute, and that's if nobody's shooting at you. Uh, they really, this is almost the kind of place where you can't spawn in. You need to come in with your own galaxy and take this place back. Oh, it's and super close at Broken Veil, but I think... How many have they got in the capture point? With 30 seconds to go, that max is going to be crucial. I see more value though with 20 seconds to go. This would be a big, big play for Connor if they can take it back. But the reinforcements, they've lost the roof and they're just streaming in now. It's going to be res grenade wars. There's still a few Connery forces left over. 10 seconds. Ah, it's so close. One final push for Emerald. Oh, they're on the point. It's flipping back and forth. Who's got the control? Come on, Connor, you need to get on the point. And Emerald, you need to get them off. Uh, six seconds. Oh my god, now the point's into contention again. And this is just mass res grenade wars. Okay, lots of dead. Emerald, res grenade, and res grenade. Both teams are going to get up at the same time. Free for all. Oh wait, no, it's just NC res grenades. <laughs> oh, stopped on five second marker. That was close. I didn't see any uh, VS res grenades. That would have been interesting because they were both all dead and all got res at the same time. Would have been bloody chaos. Now, very good for Connery. They are back on Gurney Dam right now, and that entire force that secured Gurney Dam is the people who just hopped up to where you are. They now oh, they are, so they jumped they out and will hop all over the place. If you know, are they going to come back here and they're going to lose the other base? They got 90 seconds right now to come back here. It's quick enough to do a redeploy. That I can also see that they're using dedicated galaxy pilots who are basically just ferry units, so they go to the next base in preemptive and just spawn in and drop or the redeploy. Okay, yeah, we're already seeing the redeploying happening, but what's frustrating is... Oh, there's barely anybody here. This is just a distraction force. There's, there's nobody on the capture point for Vanu. It's just a, a, a nuisance force. Don't give up. We're still oh, God. Hey, Mr. Hasser, pay attention. Front door. There you go. I'm headed up to Kessel's Cross. Twin harassers! Oh my goodness, check that minimap. Yes, the harassers are being a nuisance. Yes, they're being super effective. But if they had just a few more people... Nah, you know what, 40 seconds. I don't see how they could hold this. I mean, they're doing an extremely valiant job, but I think Emerald is just timing this perfectly. They know how long it takes to get to the point. Stretched across from the north and the south, and Connery pulled back again like a cobra wait to strike. This is very interesting. I want to I see... The, the fog of war definitely makes this a little bit more complicated to follow, but 
the decisive strikes are Connery's. I'm seeing them winning one on one whenever they fight against Emerald. But Emerald just keeps grouping up. You see that there's um the, the Southgate checkpoint fight ended, and at um, Four Fingers there's barely anyone there, so there's no fighting going on technically in the south. Uh, the Treehouse of Horrors has been probably an infiltrator hack, being a nuisance, and him being a nuisance is stopping the Treehouse of uh, the Treehouse of Horrors allowing a connection to Lambda and construction site Sigma. So in theory, if I was Connery, I'd want to get my people from Sigma uh, to Horrors as quickly as possible, or Lambda. The risk is of that Gurney Dam is going to be fully saved, so I don't be. It'd be sketchy to kind of pull those people out. The thing is, Connery at the moment is fighting to uh, Emerald's tune. You know, they are fighting on their own bases, and the only one that they're constantly trying to push is Gurney Dam, which is great because it's keeping pressure off their own bases. This is the tempo that no server has managed to figure out how to break. Emerald will win the opening, they will get the decisive bases that they want, and then they will basically just hop around. And calling it redeploy side is, is frankly not doing it justice. Redeploy side would mean you're only defending bases. They manage to do this by also hopping forward. Uh, they're, they're moving exceptionally large numbers of people around to defend their bases, but they also have very dedicated squads forward. I'm here at Atra Air Station, and they only hold one point, but they are doing work and they, they are holding more than their number here just trying to, to hold a point or two and keep the base ticking they're defending with time forward mm, the hatcher air station is a very long base cap uh, with the charlie capture point being you know, next to the spawns it definitely favors the defenders more than some of the other hard large outposts i read that when you mention those galaxies those dedicated galaxy drivers it's interesting you say that because now connery it seems to be patrolling the south looking for those galaxy and then assassinating them as soon as they see them. At, up here at the north, at Sleepy Hollow, which I can't remember what the old name of this base was. I used to call it Clay's Landing. It's the Broken Biolab. Um, there is a very small force of VS here, and they've basically been here since the beginning opening, kind of just letting this tick down. And they keep on pulling more than their numbers, and I don't think that... that Emerald has managed to actually run them off this base. They, they run them off the points, they get a little bit of points back, and these guys keep on coming back. This is absolutely what Connery needs to do to, you know, huh. to you know the, um, hold the lane or push forward. The, 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 the distraction nuisance force that's at Hatcher Air Station, there are other NC forces, but the nuisance team is N117, which is actually D117 on live server on um, Emerald. Uh, they specialize, we've seen them before, they were the ones that were on the Esmir match that were attacking um, Esmir munitions, or as we know, uh, Matheson's Triumph. And um, they specialize in guerrilla warfare, and we can see that they're just being a nuisance. Going to one point, will you push this off? Oh great, now we'll go to the other point. Oh, you got a saffron? Now we'll go to this point. And they're just being a nuisance, that, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily knowing that they'll win the fight, but playing well together, picking off enemy teams that come at them, and then just holding on to a point making a very long save cap and preventing the Connery force from fighting a can data hub, i.e. on one of their own bases. Connery is being quite dogged about the, the Gurney Dam cap. They keep on going back there and they seem to learn how to do it better every time. This is probably the most dangerous thing for Emerald right now, and I was right, they've, they've managed to get vehicles back onto this point. This time it's an entire pack of Sunderers. Um, Gosh, they really want it, don't they? They do really want it, and as I said, they keep on they keep on learning. They they keep on saying, "Oh, well, that didn't work the first time. Let's try it a different way." Uh, you know, this is this is kind of scary for Emerald. Uh, eventually, they're going to figure out what the the key is to crack this nut. We're seeing small-scale infantry match. fighting on a Charlie point. It's not something you normally see in server smash. It's more skill and squad oriented, just the number of lanes kind of separating the teams out. This is members of Havoc 56 and I believe Future Crew who are who are pushing Gurney Dam, which is the same group that's been pushing since the very beginning. It's it is the same group of people just keep on coming back. They they are not moving off this lane and they let the They really players. want it and it's admirable. They got the Sunders to spawn in, uh, I get that, although it's kind of just this very little cover, um, you can always be rocketed. But I like the fact that they're trying to use the Sunders to fight outside, not inside, that's good. Keep them away from the, once they get to the door it's almost game over, you need to fight them away. 
Unfortunately, the huge advantage of this base is not vehicles, it's air, and that's what Emerald just brought in. They brought in a small... I don't uh, know Liberator, Weaver, Grand Pounders, yeah. yeah. And this is going to take care of any vehicles that are out here. I mean, if you really seriously want to take this base, this is where I would commit your Air Force. Come here when it's a two-minute timer and you've got the outside, and then bring the, your own Air Force. Because, I tell you what, if Emerald didn't have their air, if Connery had their air force here, this would be a different story. I mean, because if Connery had their air force and was able to ground pound, Emerald would not get anywhere near the capture point building. And this they is the kind of pulling place. back and then re going somewhere else. Yeah, but if, if, if you're good, I, whether that's a resources thing or a hesitancy thing or we just want to conserve our forces, uh, your guys on the ground are fighting for the point and they could theoretically get it and take the base if you committed yourself. I but what's the air force going to... Is, is it helping in any sense? I mean, is it actually negating Emerald's ability to assist on the ground? No, because we just saw their Air Force assist on the ground at Gurney Dam. We, we know from the, pr the previous matches that Connery has had a hard time gathering an Air Force, which is, you know, that, that's unusual. Well, we'll, we'll they, see. Connery, Connery was known for an Air Force. We'll ask this. them at the end to see what's going on, but we can also see more small squad play going on this time at Hurricane Secure Storage. It's small uh, nuisance squads. They're using Valkyries as extremely mobile spawn-in um, kind of harassment forces. So Valkyrie has come to Hurricane Secure Storage, he's put down a beacon, or he's, you know, getting extra squad forces in. Maybe they're rotating members around other squads. And this is LRV, uh, LVRG. And they've got the capture point, and it's just being a nuisance. Um, and it's pulled a full squad plus of a Connery to come respond to it. And by no means is it enough with Emerald's Air Force to actually guarantee that they get the capture point. Construction site Sigma uh, has a very good point hold going on it for Emerald. Uh, they don't have a whole lot up here helping them. They've lost several of their maxes, and... Uh, Connery is just trying to pick them apart here. They're surviving mostly on medics at the point. Oh, Valkyrie's fighting a... Valkyrie's fighting a scythe. He decides to go at it, you know, can I get him, stop him from rocketing his own troops? Ah, oh, but here comes the galaxy of reinforcements. This is truly is it. Oh no, this, uh, this NC force from Emerald's doing a good job at defending the point. It's, again, all small-scale fighting that's going on. No large-scale... Uh, where the skill matters less, and it's all just Mega Zerg redeployed. I'm over at Broken Veil, uh, trying to see what Connery's doing here. It looks like they're they're trying to do a point hold survive into that stack building. Ah, oh, that medic! That medic went down and he totally left his guy. He like he didn't miss. Oh well, he's got some friends now anyway. Wow, that both teams are dropping and beaconing at the exact same time, but again, the, the timer inexecubably is just counting down in Connery's, uh, against Connery's favor. This, this group of Connery at Broken Vale, they have the numbers right now and they look like they're in a very good position, but they have no spawns that I can see. They don't have a galaxy buff and they have no air support and they don't even have very many maxes, um, if any, on this point. This is an incredibly, you know, weak and tenuous hold that they have, and already you can see Emerald spawning back in and, and pushing them from all sides. This is probably the best place they have to do a squad hold at this point, a point hold, but they need they need more than this. They're just going to get wiped off the See, point. the fight at Hurricane Secure Storage, interesting difference was that this started off small, and we've said, you know, normally when a team attacks, they just go full in, send everybody they have, and then just fight it out. But this fight started small. It was like two or three people, and then it grew, and it grew, and it grew, and it's gotten to the point now. There is a huge NC Emerald Force on the point, continuing to hold it, despite constant slight resistance from Connery, and Connery is now committing huge numbers to try and do a last second save on this base. So, I mean, it's props to Emerald for doing a good job and not showing their full hand and just gradually reinforcing as required. I mean, Connery's tried to play smart, sorry, good. Hurricane Secure Storage is, is a very, very dangerous base. It hides the population that is actually attacking it in the amp station uh, hex. So there are far more people here than what it looks like. And Connery is coming in for a last second save. They're gal dropping in. They have a 10 seconds. Response. Everyone just needs to run inside. Run inside, Emerald. I mean, Connor, run inside, run inside, go to the point. You can't afford not to run inside. More people run inside, on the point, two seconds, one second. Oh, Emerald's got it. Wow, that was close. 
Well, that was one second and Emerald takes the base. And now it's completely flipped on its head. Now we have an instance where Emerald has four whole minutes, four minutes of already full scale fighting that's going on at this capture point. So Connery has to hold this for an extremely long period of time against a defending force that has the spawn rooms, has an air force that they can call in if they require. And okay, yes, Connery does have spawns. These are exposed. I mean, these can be picked off easily by vehicles if they, uh, you know, the air force from Emerald. So we'll have to see what goes on here because this happened exactly the same case at um, Broken Veil. Vale. And if I'm not mistaken, Broken Veil vale hasn't been flipped since Emerald took it, or am I wrong? Uh, They've tried to take it, but they haven't got, actually gotten it. Yeah, it, it has not been captured since they uh, they captured it, but it is it's come uh, close. But again, uh, the the attack that Connery was making there just did not have enough support. They didn't have enough spawn sunders. They didn't have enough galaxies. They didn't have enough air. They didn't even have maxes on the point. That just that was not going to survive for the five minutes or or, or longer, depending on how the point flips, that that base was going to take to cap. Well, I like what Connor is doing. They're choosing not to fight at the capture point, but then again, they've got a lot of people. They're spreading out and they're moving out. We don't see any of Emerald's Air Force at the moment on this base trying to defend, although it's still at the 2 minute 30 marker, but it's ticking down. We see what there is of Connery's airs here, at least galaxies in a couple of sites, and they are spreading out smartly, looking for any spawn sunders that belonged to Emerald, and then just choking the bridge, preventing any clean move to the, um, the capture building. It looks like Emerald's main wing is over Nascent, and a smaller air wing is over by Sleepy Hollow. But they're, they seem pretty docile at the moment. You know, I keep on seeing Connery use these galaxies, and the galaxies are basically throwaway. Um, uh, whether they just there's too much hitting them because they don't have air superiority or whether they don't have people who are acting as gunners that's something we see from Emerald we see Emerald keep its galaxy alive and try and use it as an artillery platform Connery can't do that uh, honestly at this point if you're losing you're throwing away that many resources you need to start switching to Valkyries I if you're just going to throw the vehicle away throw away less resources uh, you know if you're not pouring maxes into it and, and, and hauling across the continent why are you wasting the, the, the resources on grabbing well here's another thing on timers um, 1 minute 30 for uh, secure storage but 60 seconds for four fingers. So Connery is gambling on taking a base, which they may do, but we see Emerald's Air Force has turned up and one minute and 20 seconds is plenty of time, but they're gonna throw away four fingers because we don't see any of the Air Force or guys down there. So if you would watch Hurricane Storage, I'm gonna go over to four fingers and watch that. I'm heading to Hurricane Storage. 30 seconds to go. Oh, ooh, a bit too fast, sorry. 30 seconds to go on four fingers, single capture point, fairly well back. I don't see how this is going to be saved, there's just too many NC and they're out popped here is Connery. You guys, wh why are you going up? You need to go down, it's, it, at 10 seconds you can go for the point, oh that max is going to be difficult. An emerald falls back to the capture point for the last few seconds just as a good safeguard. It's just not enough. And they had all the um, motion sensors and whatnot, so no one could have got in without being detected. At uh, Hurricane Secure Storage, I just saw an amazing little Valkyrie play by Emerald. Uh, all of Connery was basically outside the point, trying to defend the push across the bridges. They were all, you know, along the side. Nobody's really back at the point. A very sneaky Valkyrie came up over the cliff and dropped three guys and tried to take the point back. It managed to get re repelled by Connery, but that was that was a really, really good play by him. It was there. just, oh yeah, vault again. So by the um, the force that took four fingers was Brit, Brit on live. Uh, the penchant, they like sky whales and C4, and often found in upside down harassers. Originally from Waterson and TR, they were created at the launch of PS2. And the focus in the smash is air tactical leadership bus drivers. Uh, but as we can see, they also like taking bases. And uh, Hurricane Secure was just uh, captured. Yep. So it's take a base, give a base. Um, it's not really. And that was um, that was Mercenaries, which is a TR outfit on uh, on Connery, and they do uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, of high level. And we're back at Gurney Dam stuff. again. Um, you see, Kessels was being poked, and Hatcher. I bet it's that same um, D one one seven at Hatcher's. Go and have a look at construction site Epsilon for me while I go have a look at Gurney Dam. Has any team got dominance, Lanzer, as far as air is concerned? 
You know, it looks like Connery has a sort of air wing at Nam, but Nam Amp Station, and Emerald's still down in the, the south middle, but I, I would say they're largely avoiding each other at this point. So You fly um, above the trees, I'll fly below the trees, and nobody needs to get hurt. The attack I'd say at, uh, at one point in time. One point in time, one air wing has the dominance in the middle, and then another time, the other team has dominance in the middle. You were saying red. The uh, the attack at construction site epsilon was perhaps a squad, maybe two of, uh, of NC, and this is a, a, a relatively easy point to hold if you have a lot of people because there's a lot of height that you can gain. Um, but the, the Connery just sent too many people back. Uh, to clear this off, and again, there were not, there were no uh, harassers or anything to uh, to help the NC out here. Now reinforcements are being thrown by both teams into the Gurney Dam fight. Uh, there was a big push by the NC for the capture point, but I don't think they realized the sheer level of reinforcements. If I check this outside, incoming for Vanu, yes, they are coming in. They are beginning to swarm in, and, and I think it's only a matter of time until they retake the capture point. Ah. Uh, if ever you wanted your Air Force to make its presence felt and help us out, it would be now. And that would be very helpful in Gurney Dam with two minutes to go until a save. There we go, the point is finally flipping as we thought. Connor's Air Force is now engaged with Emerald Air Force, hoping by City Hollow. Just kind of trench warfare style shooting at each other across now, the way. Now, this, this particular point hold at Construction Site Beta is a completely different uh, animal here. There is a Sunder that is not deployed, but it is a uh, double Bulldog Sunder inside the point room, uh, able to look at three different doors and just pour fire onto them as the NC continue to hold this point. And the NC are almost completely on top of these raised platforms in the corner, uh, able to defend... It is a brutal fight going on at Gurney Dam with a minute and 35 seconds to go. Both teams are in the capture room. The VS holds the northeast. The, the NC holds the southwest, and they are just lobbing grenades and pounding the nutsacks out of each other. But it is Connery that currently barely holds the day with fresh reinforcements coming across the bridge. I love the Sunders coming in now, finally, from Connery. I'd rather like to see this Sunder right here stranglehold that bridge. 60 seconds to go. I'd rather see the Sunder go in and just block it and then buy precious time. Or maybe the difference in the galaxy play. Oh, oh, never mind. We're having a whale fight. They're, 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 galaxies are fighting each other on the ground, practically, at uh, construction site beta. Oh, it's a brutal fight, but the VS are finally outnumbered, and we see a squad now incoming from the rear, from the teleport room. Lovely blocking Sunders by Conry to try and buy time with the debris and whatnot. 35 seconds is simply not enough. Emerald is playing very patiently and they know that they just need to go into the capture point on the 10 second marker and they can get to the point from the doors. And it's another crushing push by Emerald off of Connery. I mean Connery does so well to get so far but the problem is I'm not saying they're not planning ahead for the last 30 seconds but you need to think right last 30 seconds they will throw everything they've got in a mad dash. What have we got to stop that? And it's that that point you think, well, did I save onto my grenades? Did I hold onto my C4? Yes, I could have used it earlier, but I, did I save it for that last 30 seconds? Because that's when it counts. The uh, This is construction site, I don't know what, Sigma, perhaps? Beta? Sigma. Uh, down here at uh, in the south. And this, I don't see Connery being able to save. They just simply do not have enough people down here to get this back. And this is this is the game that Emerald plays. Uh, you know, you can save two bases, but you're going to lose one. They're going to attack you in so many different places, and you have to hold somewhere. And if they do it correctly, they wind I up. I wonder how they're doing the leadership here because I'm seeing Brit again, and Brit was the was the team um, that just took uh, Forefinger. So they're obviously pushing along the south and, and working the south. So. The squad commanders have free reign to go where they want. Does the platoon leader just say you can control the south? They can just attack how they like, or, or are they being actually micromanaged? You know, you go here and you go here. This was VGSS uh, that took that um, at uh, construction site Sigma, and now, uh, especially because Connery is not defending SRP Nanite Relay Station, the south is is pretty much lost. It, it looks like uh, they're, they're sending people back to Freehouse of Horrors. Uh, they keep on making that push for Granny Dam, but 
this is a lot of territory that that Connery's given up. They're they're managing to, uh, managing to hold fairly well in the north and repel. Oh, these broken veil in the last second just got stopped. Oh, it's crucial. I'm I'm watching the fight. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get in here. It's pretty brutal. Uh, lots of grenades. Lots of grenades and more grenades. And when grenades fail, throw your head. Oh, uh, but the, the Emeralds got themselves the capture point, so they have made a very, very last second save. I just saw that on the map at the very, very end there. And this is the thing. Emerald has managed to keep galaxies up. They've managed to keep other spawns up. They have people who are not directly in the spawn point, and that allows them to maybe make that last second dash back onto the point and get those last things. Connery doesn't have that. They don't have Sunderers put up, and I don't know if they're pulling them and they're getting killed by by Air Force that I'm not seeing or or, or what, but... That is making the difference in some of these last second caps. I have to question this choice of reinforcements from Connery. I mean, can they pull it off? Got the ground. Oh, that grenade. That, that, that Halloween grenade right there. Oh, they must have a Sunder to Is that a beacon? Coming from somewhere. No, they don't have a Sunder. They just have the high ground. Maybe they, maybe they did at one point. Oh well, at any rate, uh, Broken Veil is is the new conglomerate forces set up, and, and the timer is just ticking back into their favor now. They're just going to stay here and fight. As long as they can fight uh, on their base, make a full save, and then fight on the enemy base, that would suit them just fine. Uh, interesting that construction at Lambda's not going anywhere. Treehouse of Horrors has been saved, Signal's been taken, SRP Nanit Relay, big force from uh, Connery, has had to come I back and save that. There's People a very, very large force in the cave. People in the stream chat are asking to give the stats a bit of love. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's one minute. I was going to do it on the hour marker, but um, I will show the stats in a second here. You guys just hold with me. And we can see uh, Emerald Sunder three minutes on the save rather than a capture. Be going right. So while we're watching this, we'll go down to the uh, oh brutal corridors. I'll just throw some of them up for you. Wow, check the kills out. It's neck and neck. I have never seen that in Service Smash. Usually one team's a couple of K ahead of each other. Let's see it in incrementals. We don't this have is, enough time. This is amazing. Uh, I don't know if Connor redeployed people away here. There was obviously not communication between squads. Even though they got... Uh, Emerald off the point here at SRP. As I said, they did not clear the spawns. Emerald, oh, they didn't clear the spawns and Emerald just stayed and now they got the capture point and it's 90 seconds to go. This is a huge, huge problem. This is this is literally making the difference in these pushes. Connery goes somewhere, they don't manage to keep up a spawn, they don't have a galaxy, they don't have a way to get back onto the point. Emerald does. This this base uh, has to be resecured. And the map timeline says all. Oh, really, Connery has stuttered to get started. In fact, if I look at this correctly, Connery so far has only succeeded in taking three bases, including neutrals, the entire game. Whereas we see the Emerald Force, they've taken 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They've managed to capture 12 bases. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they've got a 12-point lead, or base lead, because they've obviously lost some, but we can see... Oh, and now see the thing is, the Emerald Force still on control of the capture point, now Connery's had to re-redeploy back in full numbers, but the terrain is now working against them when it was working for them in the beginning. Getting into these narrow choke points with 30 seconds to go. Bring up the leaderboard in a second guys and we'll just show who's performing and whatnot. This is a classic example of the air just allowing so much more to happen. Emerald has its air hovering between construction site beta and uh, and bases to the south. Oh, and that's smart in. beacons. You know the hole in the cave at Nanit Relay? They're actually using that to put their beacons down on the capture point to allow immediate reinforcements. That being the Emerald team. And they got the base. I don't, and now, don't get me wrong, there probably were other fires going on that the Connery commander... Lots of little dots. I don't see many spotted maxes for Emerald yet. This looks like mostly just basic infantry. Ready? 
this is a much better hold on this point at Broken Vale. Uh, they, the Connery doesn't have its maxes either, but they are they are holding all the choke points the way they need to. It's going to come down to did they, as Farah said before, did they hoard their C4 and their grenades for what's coming at the last second? We can't let this facility fall to the enemy. All right, well, I'm watching the thing. I'm just fixing the stats and the overlays in a second, guys. Sorry about the delay. Uh, 16 seconds. Oh, 16 right. seconds at Broken Veil. I don't see enough emerald here. I think this is going to go through. Because like a lot of emerald needs to be over here at construction site beta, but then quite a number of resources and a and lot of sunderers. A Connery outfit. I don't know. 405. Oh, um, I'm sorry. It's a uh, Hosp. They they spelled it with numbers. Uh, Hospital or order. Uh, takes Broken Veil Garrison. That's the first time that they managed to get this back. It was an excellent little point hold they did. And they also still, it looks like, are holding Hurricane Secure Storage. It's possible that the center might clear up a little bit better for uh, for Connery here. Emerald found a way to pack Sunderers inside of A Point at Construction Site Beta. They're just piling Sunderers in with Bulldogs and Fury. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Down this point. Yeah, they, they used the stairs, the infantry stairs. Now those people who are those people who are on my stream, um, uh, I unfortunately don't have the time to talk to you in, in Twitch chat. So uh, if you are listening on my stream, Farah stream is back up. You can move back over to the other stream. I'm the secondary uh, the secondary stream for this. At uh, SRP Nanite Relay Station in the far south of Warp Gate, there does not seem to be a Emerald Presence yet, and this is not as long of a run from the spawn as others. Although it does look like they're taking out... Oh, it looks like um, Connery's actually taking out some spawn sunders that Emerald left here. This is probably left over from their attack on this base. And this is two minutes until... You know what we didn't through. see at the Gurney Dam? We didn't see proxy repair sunders, and we are seeing proxy repair sunders at Constructed Site Beta. I wonder if that would have made any difference whatsoever. But I like the and fact that um, Emerald is actually pulling it off from Beta. And they seem so much more comfortable in terms of getting the capture point. With a minute to go, there's barely any pressure whatsoever. Uh, speaking of construction sites, and they do all look alike, and, and it's very hard for us to keep them straight. Construction site Lambda, uh, down in the center, the south center, has a very, very good hold. 42 seconds. Holy mother of God! That's a lot of maxes! This is a mega max crash going on a construction site beta. The NC sees this on the minimap, but the problem is there are four Sunders all with Furies. Here goes grenade spam! Go, go, go! Do not stop. Get to capture point. <laughs> that one Sunder just took out five maxes. When it blew up. There's so many maxes though. This is a massive resource intensive push. And it worked. We check out the population numbers. They outnumber the enemy two to one, but that Sundra push yeah. demanded such a pull. Now, we want to talk resources here, if we're talking the resource game, because you can be drained out. Everyone that pulled the max there, and that must have been like two or three squads worth, has now 450 resources down. So in the grand one scheme TRS. of things, this is going to hurt them. One TRS down at construction site Lambda just captured the base. Um, so even though Beta was just resecured, they lost another construction site in, in place of it. And it, it, second. it's a second relay. I'm heading down there now. By the way, who captured um, Broken Veil? Hosp Hospitalier, uh, you said, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, they, they spelled it all with numbers, so I didn't recognize the outfit name. Ah. I'm having a quick look at the map. S oh, Nanite, really? Check that out. And I am here right now. I just do not see. There is nowhere near enough NC to, to stop this. They're, they're pouring in right now, but they are too far away. Three seconds, two seconds. I can see on the minimap, they actually are a horde coming along, but it's not enough. So that would be Solex uh, from, from Connery that just captured that. That is huge stabilization down here in the south. But there's a large force, I mean there's like a very large force of NC from Emerald. The fact is Emerald's got the beacons up now and they will probably push the capture point, which they have, they've got the capture point back. Do they now stay here and take it back? See, Emerald has shown that they can take a base and push off the defenders. Now can Connery prove that we've taken the base, can we now push off the, you know, former defenders, now attackers off the capture point? 
Yeah, it didn't seem they have anyone positioned in Four Fingers or construction site. So they weren't able to start a cap on it. Uh, Akan Southern Labs had a capture going on it, uh, but unfortunately uh, it was gal dropped uh, and it looks like it cleaned up. I didn't get get up here in time. It looked like there was uh, actually something going on, but unfortunately I, I missed whatever it was. Well, we can see the Conry force is beginning to come from the spawn rooms and they're just applying pressure, getting back into the uh, capture room. Um, hmm. Gotta say this looks tricky. Except that Connery seems to have blocked places with Emerald Air now that Connery's in the southern region. Emerald Air looks like they're in the northern region. What I would like. Carefully, an all call. 59 minutes remaining. 59 minutes. Uh, speaking of air, there is a significant Vanu air presence over the center of the map right now. Um, they're kind of over Broken Veil, vale, Akan Southern, a little bit of Nascence, and uh, it looks like they might be trying to help the cap at Hur Hurricane Storage. This guy's got the right idea. This guy right here has got the right idea. From Future Crew, um, 10FC, uh, whoever VS612 is, um, he's on the roof, he's looking down, he's throwing grenades, and he's just sniping one at a time, and that's what I'd like to see. Maybe more grenades? Oh wow! Mr. Infiltrator, what are you doing? You're committing suicide. Oh uh, dear. This is, uh, when we talk about defending the point from outside the point, this is exactly what we're talking about here at Hurricane Secure Storage. Uh, there is a, a squad, maybe half a squad, of long-range heavies and engineers up on the hill. They've beaconed in, and they have a complete view of every approach to this, uh, uh, this hellhole little building where the, the point is sitting in. And they could they just have complete view they can they can nail anyone who's trying to come here it's only spending six people they can have six people down and uh, connery has finally moved some people onto the bridge they are defending every way that emerald can push onto this base this is what they needed to do the first time and this is what emerald did to them when they took this base earlier which base are we talking about right now this is hurricane secure storage okay uh, which has uh, 143 left on it at the moment okay well we're also watching the 133 left on nanite relay where the Vanu Connery force is trying to get all the entrances, they just can't seem to get inside or apply enough pressure on one entrance. Reinforcements for the Connery force, they're easy. They just come from the spawns. From the Emerald force, I can see they've maybe got a couple of Sunders. I'm surprised these beacons are still up, that nobody's EMP'd, because it's so easy to get on the roof and just throw the EMP down. Oh, and the number of people who have dropped in the center and committed suicide. Connery does have a surprise headed down to Nanat Re Re Relay Station. We'll see if they get down there in time, but their Air Force, which seems to be platoon strength again, was headed south last What's their Air Force going to do? The enemy's in a base inside a case rock cap point. There are bare cap points to, you know, commit your Air Force. Oh, never mind. Alright, where's this guy going? He's obviously bought himself a yellow camel. Mr. Shiny, what are we doing? I... <laughs> He bought, okay, we're looking at a goon sunderer that's got the yellow camel and it's got the Halloween Jekyll horn. And he's just pounding on the back of the Connery forces trying to get into one of the oh, entrance man. points. It is a fantastic disco party that only the Vano can do at the Awful Pit. There is so much lasher fire heading into the A point here. Uh, just incredible disco balls of death flying in there. Uh, it, uh, one of the things with the lasher, though, is it isn't necessarily taking people out. Um, they, they can't stand in the doorway, but they are managing to heal up and, and res in. The thing that the lasher allows you to do is if you mass fire it, it makes people stay away from the doorway. You can get closer to it. You can throw in grenades. That's not what Connery's doing. They're just firing long range right now, uh, putting on a pretty light show into that A point. Oh, I think I was too fast for the observer camera. Whoa! That's... Okay, let me... That was... <laughs> I've never seen the observer camera do that before. I've gone into map mode to prevent, you know, prevent people from having whiplash. But I am spinning a million miles an hour. Okay, so, now, warning guys. Get... I'm going to go out of map view and bail out the vehicle. If you suffer from epilepsy or something, don't look at the screen. Alright, here we go. Um, while we were doing with this, Hurricane Secure Storage did cap in the favor of the VS. It is now one minute until the Awful Pit caps, and I finally start seeing some VS not just firing down into the A point, but actually trying to push down on foot. Oh, you're not kidding about the, la the Lasher Disco Show. So 
quickly with the graph, and it's, it's overwhelming force on this uh, capture point. It's such a tiny building for so many people. On heavy assault, it's just it's barely holding on. Does, does nobody look up? Now that it is night on Hassan, um, the van who mostly come out at night. The van who mostly come out at night. You know, it, it, I think it's hard for me to see really much of anybody, uh, uh, be it Venu or, uh, or NC in these conditions, and I think both sides would benefit from actually taking off what little camel they have, because Hassan is exceptionally dark as far as continents go once it, once nighttime falls, and there's all sorts of little shadows that you can hide in to, uh, to ambush people. There is... <laughs> Uh, this, you're starting to see the difference in resources uh, and, and how they've had to spend them between Emerald and Connery. Connery has consistently tried to pull max crashes to save some of their bases. I can't help but think that is going to hurt them, just, just in general. Here, here, Emerald now is able to pull an offensive max crash. They have at least 12... Which base is this? ...at Whispering Pass. Um, this is a powerhouse building. It is exceptionally easy to, to defend. This is something that, that entire outfits make their bread and butter doing, is defending this particular building. Um, and it is, it's the kind of thing where when you see this many gorilla suits with shotguns walking around, it's really not something that you want to go into. Not gonna do a whole lot of help from that gurney dam. Now the stream of infantry is coming out to save Emerald Point, though. Well, we're whipping over to Whispering Pass. Um, yeah, oh, not only have they got lots of maxes, but you can see the sheer number of Sunders they've got up. Even a Vanguard! Wow, Vanguard, hello, Mr. Vanguard. Uh, although he's all AP, he's probably defending the Sunders. And they're just using the Sunders for massive amounts of suppression of the spawn room. But, yes, you're right, I'm going to go find those maxes, because that looks like a steel wall of death. This has been pulled by um, Dada and uh, one TRS. I'll have a quick look on those guys, see if I've got anything here, on my cheat sheet. Um, here at Brokenville Garrison, the NC have, have gal dropped in. Uh, they are, and this is this is the huge difference. We see Connery go and attack, and it's very rare that they keep up their galaxy. It's very rare that they manage to keep their Sunderers alive. And here... The NC Emerald has managed to, to push in. They have a galaxy up. They're using it to spawn in. Um, they're trying to use it to uh, to do some damage with with bulldogs. It, it, it's the kind of thing that makes all the difference. Although it did just get one shotted by something. I don't know whether that was a friendly uh, uh, drop pod or what. So uh, one TR is um, infantry combined arms galaxy drops. It started in November 2012 by Metzke. And uh, friends on Soltech has sent me tactical wheels in gameplay community. Uh, Der Rosa Baron, the Red Baron, took over leadership and has been leader outfit leader ever since, focusing on air tactical leadership bus drivers and holders. Well, there you go. This pass is still is still falling. Um, I bet. Oh, fa falling is is a term I wouldn't use. Fallen is a bit over presumptuous, but it's probably going to happen. Um, it's it's got hit pretty hard. I mean, there's just like a steel no. wall of maxes. The, the well, fact is, the Connery force can't. Oh wow, that one Connery max was like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" Oh, oh my God, this is a steel wall of death, and then he dies. So yeah, you know. What's interesting here is that the trade that they're attempting to make. Wow. Attempting to make. Connery is very very close to the point here at Broken Vale. They might be able to get this back, but this is what Emerald is able to do with uh, with extra resources. Dude. They push with the maxes where they are and they can take a base and trade for another. There is a six max wall on the top of large stairs with engineers supporting everything all with um, basically hacksaws or you know, scat maxes or whatever and they all just fired on one door because the enemy only came in one door. It was just <laughs> it was just supremely impressive Shotgun streaks, never ending, going to the doorway. Now, with you know, with the South falling, Connery has fewer options to push into, and that means that Emerald has few options or has more options to attack, which benefits them greatly. They don't have to attack anywhere, but we know that they're going to. That's we don't um, we don't show uh, stream chat because uh, well, in game chat. But there's a hilarious conversation going on where uh, Server Smash NC076 is basically saying, I paid for my Sunder with real dollars! 
<laughs> and then his next Yale chat is, Tomorrow my children will ask, Daddy, why are we eating at food cans? It's because he bought for his Sundra. <laughs> well, I, I certainly have to say that if we're going with uh, cash dedication, it is far, far and away obvious that Emerald is the victors of that uh, of that little battle going on between all the circles. Oh, and they've already moved on to Bital Eastern Depot. They're still out popped as the attacking force, but they're just applying pressure, if I could actually see my own waypoint. They're applying pressure um, off their base, never allowing Connery to fight on their base, always fighting on Connery's bases. Generator stabilized. And we have to see that with 48 minutes remaining, there'd have to be a spectacular turnaround, you know, for this to, just to revert. At this point, this is this is something. I mean, look at the map timeline. Sorry, sure, you go ahead. Yeah. Needs to start to start thinking about if it's not possible to win or tie right now, you need to start thinking about limiting the damage. Be Depending on what happens in the game tomorrow, the territory that you add to your total is everything. If you still wind up with more territory percentage than Cobalt, who could very easily lose tomorrow, you can still wind up in the championship game. So this is the, the, a situation where maybe you're not playing to try and win, you are playing to try and get to a certain number. Maybe it's 50%, uh, uh, 47% or something like that of territory. Mm, you got a point because... The, the, the more heavily Connery gets beaten here opens the doorway for Cobalt tomorrow um, to, to, you know, they, they can afford a larger loss. Basically, if, if Miller wins tomorrow, uh, the, it will push Cobalt out of the finals uh, if they win sufficiently. And, and it really comes down to uh, territory percentage points. So losing heavily here to Emerald is, is unacceptable for Connery. They really need to hold their ground. Yes, they may have had a bad start and, you know, they're halfway into the server smash now, but they need to hold their ground. And if we look at the minimap, for the last, let's say, um, 10, 15, 20 minutes, they've ha it has been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it's somewhat stabilized. It's not going all one way that it was originally for Emerald. It's that astonishing, the kill graph is still the same. That, that fight in the south, however, is is a real problem uh, right now. There is just such a large force that keeps on pushing down, and they're just they're just marching up the lane. Uh, you know, this is the kind of thing where we watched this happen with Connery's uh, other match, where they decided to give up the the bio labs, assuming. But they need to spawn somewhere. But this is the thing: uh, Emerald brings in four or five spawn thunders, lots of spawn options. But with they know. That Connery knows, and they even have the capture point. So this is the first time we've actually seen a fight where Connery has their own capture point in their own base on a full four minutes. They could have like an infiltrator be a nuisance, and it looks like they might even do things at Whisper and Pass because we can see the hostile numbers. But what I'm getting at is that they also have the time here to Bytel Biolab as an example, right? Just Bytel Biolab has air terminals. You could have a squad or a half squad, six people, spawn a Valkyrie, flying with stealth. Boom, nuke this guy, then nuke this guy, then nuke that guy. Guys spawn in, they have Sundra busting gear. There's nobody defending the Sundras. You kill off the spawns, you kill off the fight. Um, but instead, they're choosing to actually fight on the capture point and defending the cap, even though they have a full four minutes and time to spend. I can understand if they weren't doing it, because then they could, you know, redeploy to Whispering Pass, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Yeah, this, this is the kind of thing where Connery needs to start moving forces ahead to uh, to defend the base forward with time. Just sending, as you said, one or two infiltrators, half a squad of people forward to flip points is a huge, huge thing. Even if you send six people and say, one of you go flip the point, the rest of you go hide, and that means you get six chances to go flip the point on them, that's a valid tactic at this point. Do you know who the uh, force commander is for um, this Emerald team? For Emerald, I, I do not know who the Force Commander is. Uh, because it's, it's, it's an alternating team, so I know it's not Roy Awesome, so I'm wondering if um, if they get over 70% today, if they get over 70%, uh, Roy gets delegated to Scrubman, and then uh, <laughs> you know, to see who fights for uh, kind of Force Command of the Championship game, if, if Emerald gets should, himself in. Should I, say, should I say don't feed the animals in Twitch chat, please? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first, Emerald... Uh, Redland just called you all animals, but nah. Looks like Emerald is N Medius Rage from Vault. Ah, uh, well, the fact that oh, the Whispering Pass is ticking down now. Looks like it's 
emerald air, but some of the spawn sunders that were around are being picked off now by Connery. Uh, the fight is moving off. Doesn't seem like it's as intense uh, as it was before. In fact, yes, the entire NC force has moved. Where have they gone? They're pressuring Cairn Station. Their air force is moving north as well. Where are they all going? Secure storage? No. Broken Vale? A can Southern Labs? Uh, possibly can Southern Labs. Construction site Beta is big pressure. Unfortunately, here we are again at uh, at Gurney Dam, and Connery seems to be learning all the lessons they needed to use the first couple times here. They managed to get a single harasser onto point uh, with a PPA that really helped them, but it was a single harasser and perhaps a, a single squad with them, no max support, no spawn sunder support, and it was eventually wiped out. If they had done that earlier, if they had managed to have two of those things down here and had their sunderers driving around like they did earlier, you, you really have to wonder, you know, this, this base came down to 10 seconds at, at one point. Would those PPA harassers have made the difference if they had gotten uh, down the first time? Uh, oh, it's too late. To, oh, no, it's too late. Oh, you're going to get absolutely butt munched. What are you doing, guys? Oh, well, okay, so uh, Connery decides to drop with a galaxy on the roof. There's too many enemy forces, but they're trying anyway. One thing I did forget to mention was that Emerald chose to leave the base that they were trying to capture and went for the save of the base that they actually owned. So they weren't going for that gambling, we'll take something, we lose something. Oh, right, sorry, and I've got the stats up on the page. I actually wanted to show... They did manage to take construction site beta again, again with their patented fort sunder in every corner technique. Uh, that just, that is, that's absolutely brutal. I, I, that's something I do not know how you counter that. Oh, wow, they actually did go to the capture point. And they're flipping it, although it's almost three minutes. It's going to be an insane miracle for them to hold on to it for this, this long. And as we show on, on stream, guess what has the top gun kills? Would it be our friend Mr. Orion? It is the Orion by quite some measure. The anchor is second with 1500 or 1600 kills, but the Orion's up at 2500. You and Mr. Are... Who's third place? You just caused a massive ruckus in the channel there, uh, Farrah. People saying Fat and Farrah. Sorry, sure. what are they saying about me? Because the, uh, um... the two minute delay, um, you were saying something about Roy Awesome. And the right, right, but what are they going on about? The, 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 oh, the scrub man thing? Oh, scr scrub man Roy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's he done for Emerald aside from lead them to victory a couple of times? <laughs> as I said, Ouch. please, please stop feeding the animals. Well, anti-vehicle grenades, as I give them their last uh, nourishment, is a uh, third place. So surprise, surprise. Now, Whispering Pass finally had an, a, a VS Connery uh, element move on to it. They seem to be trying to push onto the point. They they've gotten their spawns under or killed, and unfortunately, it looks like they're being picked off in the woods right now. But that's what they need to keep on doing. It, it, all of these bases that are under threat here, you need to start getting everything ticking forward. If you can send half a squad to every single base you're connected to, and 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 do whatever else you need to do without those six people, and let them be able to to be ready on the point to pull. Well, it does. Like that. I mean, it's it's hard to show. It looks like Connery's stabilized. In that, you know, their bases are not being kind of captured as quickly as they were before. Maybe it's because the lanes are condensing now that it's easier for them to kind of hold. But also, crucially, uh, the Connery force, they are, maybe not successfully, but they are attempting to attack. I mean, we just saw at the very end there, um, Kessel's Crossing was pushed off, but they were fighting there nonetheless. Um, Hatcher's Air Station has been going on for ages now, so maybe we wouldn't have a look at what's going on there. I can Southern Labs is actually being flipped again, so they're having another good crack at it. But it's if you notice one thing as we look across the map, it's basically Kessel's Crossing. Well, was uh, twenty four forty eight, so that is two to four squads. But Hatcher, um, I can Southern Labs is two squads. Nasons is two squads. Gurney Dam was two squads, and um, in the south, well. The forces there, it's, it's uh, two to four squads. So, I mean, it's all relatively balanced numbers, and it's not like 96 plus mega kind of crushing blows upon each other. And, and this is with 288. Oh, wow, there's actually an air battle going on above. Um, I can. Come on, Lanzo, you're supposed to be on top of that. Um, I, I see they're actually trying to go at it for this time rather than just stay at a distance. What Emerald has always been so good at in all of these matches that we've seen, and we've heard it from multiple servers now, is it feels like they're fighting more people. It feels like they have more people, and what they are so exceptional at is moving their forces around exactly where they're needed at exactly when they're needed. And that is something that 
they're they're pretty much unmatched at uh, to be able to send whether it's a squad or 24 guys or whatever, and they don't seem to make the mistakes that other people do, where they wind up sending too many people somewhere and losing a base in, in the process. They they really thrive, and their entire game plan is based on get what we want in the opening, and then push everything else. Everything else will fall into place if that happens. Watching, I have to feel that. Emerald has the larger air force, and at the moment it's just single um, scythes just being showing extreme levels of skill, but ultimately being heavily at number. Following this one T forty two X. Trying to find their Cobra strike. Well, I'm having a tough time. Connery is okay, again. Mr. Valkyrie, turn around! Turn around! Connery is learning some of these Go lessons get him, get him. perhaps a little too late in the, the match. They are bringing vehicles onto points at Construction Site Lambda. They, they are trying to... They, I think probably what's happening is they're saying, wow, man, they just absolutely wrecked us. We should, we should try that when they come back. It's the kind of things, though, that had you done this early in the match, it, it might have changed some of these bases. Uh, for the... And, again, there's just so many people coming through to... To uh, to resecure this base for uh, for Emerald. Yeah, I can't find him. Connery's there.